So here we are, and we code today the fine tuning of a T5 model on a specific downstream task on summarization. So I would say runtime, we have a GPU. Yes, beautiful. So let's go and run everything. Here we go. At first, of course, we have to install our Hugging Face dataset, our Hugging Face transformer, a specific evaluation metric. And let's have a look at what transformer version. I think the last one was 4.26. If we are running with the latest version, takes some time, no problem at all. And then we are start to fine tune our T5 model on a specific downstream task on our summarization task. 4.26.1, beautiful. Now, as our checkpoint, I told you, you could go for the Flan T5 small or for the Google T5 version 1.1, or you can even go here from Google T5 small, the language model adapt, whatever you choose. We choose here the classical, the smallest T5 small model. There's nothing smaller because as you can see here, we have system RAM, GPU RAM, and we need to run this on a free Google Colab notebook. So here we go. The smallest that is possible, this is our model. Now, we need, of course, a very special data set for our training on the summarization task. So we need a data set that is focused on summarization. And we have here in Hugging Face here, the so-called XSum data set, if you want to have a look, wait a second. We have a document. This is a BBC article. Then we have a human summary. It's a one sentence summary of the complete article. And we have a distribution of the data set in 200,000 training elements, 11,000 validation elements, and 11,000 test elements. Beautiful. If you just want to see how this looks like, here we go. So here we have a document. Let's click it. So you see, this is a huge document here on the left side. Then we have here one sentence summary and we have an ID, but this is it. And we have more than 200,000 elements of this. And this is our training data set where our T5 small can now be fine tuned on. On this data, we perform fine tuning. Now we need an evaluation metric to know if it's good or best or whatever. If you know Rouge, beautiful. If not, it's recall oriented. Understudy for gisting evaluation. It's a set of metrics and a software package used for evaluating automatic summarization in LLP. You can have a deep dive if you follow this link, but we are focusing on the method of fine tuning and not on particular evaluation steps. So yes, we do have to install Evaluate, a new Hugging Face library that provides us here evaluate.load rouge with this particular evaluation metric, but never mind. Take some time, download script 100%. Beautiful. So everything is loaded. Yeah, the data set, just to have a verification, as I told you, we have a training data set with 200K, we have a validation data set with 11K, and we have a test data set also with 11K. Beautiful. Yes, again, here the text, if you want to see this again, here we have our document, here we have our one sentence summarization, and you know, this is exactly what I showed you. Now for the metric, yes, there are a lot of parameter, never mind. We focus on the fine tuning of our T5 model. And so here we go. At first, of course, we have to have a tokenizer. So we say here tokenizer, as you know, auto tokenizer from pre trained, and then we have our model checkpoint. This is our T5 small from Google. We do this in a second. Uh, what I want to show you that here. If we use now this, we need a prefix. And I just told you, if we have a particular task like summarization, we just put here a prefix in front of it. So then here we go. Now, 
The input, that any input longer than what the model selected can handle will be truncated to the maximum length accepted by the model. The padding will be dealt later on, I'll show you it in the data call later. So we pad examples to the longest length in the batch and therefore optimizing, of course, our available memory. So what we do, we define a pre-process function, we define a maximum input length, we define a maximum target length, and you are familiar with this. Yes, if you want to see the data set now, you have here our input IDs. This is our tokenization happening. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, then, of course, we map this to all sentence pairs. And here we have, as you know, we have this beautiful map command here to apply this function on all the pairs of sentences in our data set. We just use the map method of our data set object we created earlier. This will apply the function on all the elements of all displayed in a data set. So our training, validation, and testing data set will be pre-processed in this single command. Beautiful. As you can see, this takes about five minutes. CPU RAM and GPU RAM is fine, flatlining. We do not expect any problem at all because now comes the main part, fine tuning the model. So let's start here. Now that our data are clean, ready, up, we can now download the pre trained model and start to fine tune it. Since our task is of the sequence to sequence kind, we of course use here a model for sequence to sequence language models. So here we go. From our Hugging Face Transformers, we import here our model for sequence to sequence, our data collator, our training arguments that we need, and our trainer itself. So everything for sequence to sequence is on board. And then we define our model. And we say here from pre-trained, so we load all the weights of our T5 small model from Google. Great. For course here for our model, there are a lot of training arguments. What is it? It is the learning rate, the batch size, the weight decay, the number of training epochs. If you want, if you're running on a CUDA core or on an NVIDIA GPU with CUDA cores, you can say here floating point 16 true or not. So all those arguments, and if you want, you can have here a, a directory, you can give here a specific name where the data are stored. So these are our training arguments for our sequence to sequence model. Beautiful. Batch size 16, whatever goes with your GPU, beautiful. So we are still downloading here no, we're still mapping here. Our pre-process pre function takes seven and a half minutes. My goodness. Yeah, we have two, more than 200 data sets. Okay, so still, but this should execute. This should execute. What else? Yeah, then we have, of course, our data collator. I showed you already in my other uh, videos here for our sequence to sequence task, we have a data collator with our tokenizer and our model. What does it do? We need a special kind of data collator, which will not only pad the inputs to the maximum length in the patch, but will also have here included our labels that we need. Yes, yes, yes. You can then compute an evaluation metric. Please have a look in this if you're interested. If not, it's just a metric that gives you the evaluation parameter. And now comes the really important part. We set up our Hacking Face Trainer class. And of course, we have here the Sequence to Sequence Trainer. We are going insert now our model. We insert here our arguments. Where are our arguments? Here, our arguments are here. Our sequence to sequence training arguments. These are our arguments. They go here. And then we have a training data set. Of course, this is our tokenized data set. We have an evaluation data set. We have our data collator with the perfectly padded sequences. We have a tokenizer and we have a metric. So this defines completely our trainer class. And then, as I showed you here in the easiest example to fine tune, 
here a complete transformer architecture. Now comes the famous trainer.train expression. And then we will see that it takes about, I don't know, two hours, three hours, four hours, depending on the GPU that we get. And if we are successful, that we not crash again on GPU RAM, because before I used the, yes, I know, I connected to a GPU runtime, I'm not utilizing it, I know. I'm waiting for you to finish here. Because I was running on a T5 base here on the free call-up notebook and the T5 base model crashed with out of GPU RAM. So let's see if now we are able to run this. My goodness, what is what are you doing here? Okay, finally done. Okay, now we are downloading here our sequence to sequence models. Downloading. Downloading, done. Model, training arguments, done. Data collator, done. Metric, done. Trainer definition, done. And now here we go. Yes, you are using a T5 tokenizer, fast tokenizer on Rust. Yes, of course, I know this. And here we go. What else do we have? You can see here the first estimation. And I'm, as I just want to show you, how many epochs I have, number of training epochs, one. So when you do it, you go four, eight, 10, 12, whatever. This is just for demonstration that you get an idea. And no, honestly, two hours, two hours and 42 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, I do not think that we're gonna wait close to three hours for this demonstration to finish. You see it is working. You see GPU RAM. I have to go with the T5 small because we are already in the red. We are close to 13 gigabyte and I only have 15 gigabytes. So now you see why my T5 base model crashed here out of CUDA. But now this looks good. So the T5 small you can train on a free Google Colab notebook. But of course, the performance of a small model is not at all enough if you want to use this in any reasonable way. And there's no way you compare this results to a GPT-3 that runs on a supercomputer. But I just wanted to show you the code and the process, how you fine tune here a T5 model with the Hugging Face Trainer class in PyTorch, and you got a model that is especially trained and fine tuned now on our specific task. And this is the summarization task. You have a huge chunk, a huge document, and you get out one or two sentence summaries. So we have a T5 model pre trained by Google and now fine tuned by us on one particular task. And you see here, the training time for the fine tuning is two hours and 41 minutes. So I think it doesn't make sense here to let the system run anymore. Then let's stop it. Yeah, maybe let's have a look. I'll show you what I got. I got a Tesla T4 with 15 gigabytes, beautiful. But you see, it was only able to run a fine tune a T5 small model and a T5 base model crushed. And may I remind you that I said the, we are not working with FP32, but we are working with half precision. So you see, if you fine tune those systems, you need a lot of compute resources. And in my next video, we're gonna have a look at a professional version.